So I'm wondering, and I bet you're wondering, is the world reopening soon? Well, that's what we're going to talk about here on this live stream today. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This video, it's a live stream. So if you're on the live stream, I'm looking forward to hearing what you think about these uh, countries and cities that are reopening, and indeed they are. And uh, as usual, every live stream, I'll do Q&A at the end, and I always give away some Yellow Productions uh, merchandise. We'll be giving that away towards the end as well. So in this video, we'll be discussing destinations that are welcoming visitors back. Uh, once again, saying travel is allowed to resume, tourists are welcome. Although, if you do decide to travel to these destinations, you might face some of the typical restrictions we're seeing in many countries, such as face masks, temperature checks, and social distancing. Uh, but each one of these places is applying a little different barometer to it. And so I thought it would be interesting to kind of go through it and see different countries approach to reopening to travel. And certainly the first country we're going to talk about is Iceland. Iceland made the news uh, because they were kind of really the first country to come out and say we are reopening to tourism. Iceland is officially reopening to tourism on June 15th. So just in two weeks. And uh, so now the way it's going to work coming into Iceland is uh, basically they're going to have uh, immediate COVID-19 tests for people on arrival in Iceland, uh, or they can present a clean bill of health from the authorities back home, wherever they come from. Uh, and actually, they're giving free COVID-19 tests for the first uh, month that people are arriving, sorry, the first two weeks. Uh, afterwards, they're going to see, but uh, the tests actually cost. 350 US dollars, but if you go in the first two weeks, uh, that will be free when they open up. The uh, visitors that come, so it like, takes like five hours for the test results to come back, but visitors who come to the country, they can enter the country and they'll be contacted regarding their test results. Uh, and uh, after two weeks, Iceland's going to evaluate this. If the project is successful, well, uh, then they might start charging. Now, what's going to happen if you test positive for COVID-19 in Iceland? Well, they've set up some... Uh, isolation corridors in the event that guests test positive so that people have some place to stay safely. Um, and initially, Iceland is going to be screening all cases, but if very few cases are detected, then Iceland says they may switch to targeted testing uh, or that maybe there's a possibility that only people coming from high-risk countries may be tested in the future. Now, Iceland is not the first country or airport to do COVID-19 tests on arrival. Uh, actually, Vienna in Austria was kind of the first airport to announce doing COVID-19 tests in the airport. Uh, they actually started doing COVID-19 tests there on May 4th, which is Star Wars Day. Uh, may the 4th be with you, May 4th. So for a total of 190 euros, uh, passengers can be tested quickly, results in a couple of hours, and that way they don't have to have the 14-day quarantine in uh, Austria. Now, travel into um, Vienna and Austria right now is only open to residents of the European Union. Uh, the Austrian government says they intend to cautiously reopen the country's tourism sector for foreigners this summer, uh, but they've given no actual uh, dates for that. Um, and uh, yes, uh, Cab notices the background that they, our little uh, little princess does seem like she is busy. She is. Sabrina wants to know how she gets a t-shirt. Well, I'll be giving away one on the live stream today to someone who answers one of my questions correctly about something I talked about. Or uh, as Kathy says, uh, you can buy one on the Etsy shop. So thank you very much, Kathy, uh, for mentioning that. Uh, and the link to the um, link to the Etsy shop is in the description. As uh, as Christine was uh, so great to point out, thank you, Christine. I should be faster to read the chat. Thank you for helping that. Uh, all right. So next country that I want to talk about is Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Luxembourg is a very tiny country in Europe. If you're not familiar with Luxembourg, it is bordered by Belgium, Germany, and France. Uh, it is one of the smallest countries in Europe with an area of about 2,500 square kilometers or about 1,000 square miles. The total population of the country of Luxembourg is 600,000 people. But uh, Luxembourg is doing a month-long pilot, kind of like Iceland, uh, as of May 29th, so just a couple days ago, all passengers, and again, right now, just from Europe, uh, arriving in Luxembourg, 
they're going to get a free voucher valid for seven days to be tested at a medical lab of their choice. Uh, they'll also be able to do it at the airport for people who want to do it right away. Uh, they'll be able to go about things. If they do get a positive result, the standard self-quarantining will apply, uh, and uh, Luxembourg is expected to open to non-European visitors also on June 15th, just like Iceland. So you got another destination you can visit right there. Uh, St. Lucia is one of the first Caribbean islands to open up to tourists. St. Lucia is opening on June 4th, so just here in three days if you're itching for someplace warm, sunny, and tropical to go to. Uh, but St. Lucia is making things uh, a little bit more stringent. Uh, they're not offering the COVID-19 test on arrival. Before going to St. Lucia, you will need to present a certified negative COVID-19 test when you check in for your flight to get there, taken within 48 hours of your flight. You'll need to wear masks on the flight to St. Lucia, regardless of what the airline actually says, uh, and upon arrival. Visitors will have their temperature taken when they arrive. Then when when you arrive at St. Lucia, you can only take authorized taxis that you've pre-booked through the hotel. Visitors will be unable to rent cars or use any shared transport. And then while visitors are in St. Lucia, uh, they can only book at certain hotels. Visitors will have their temperatures taken at every meal at those hotels. Every open hotel will have a nurse station, quarantine facilities. Um, and basically, there won't be much to do in St. Lucia uh, except the things and resorts. But if you're looking for a tropical destination and everything you want to do is in that one resort, well, uh, then you can do it there. All right. Um, another tropical island, the U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, flights resuming and visitors allowed as of today, June 1st, uh, and restaurants also reopened in uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands uh, at 50% restricted capacity. Um, you know, standard standard COVID-19 restrictions there. You need to wear masks. Uh, the beaches are open, no big gatherings. Uh, but hotels, guest houses, timeshares, and Airbnbs, which were shut down in the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, have been allowed to resume booking today. Another country that's made a lot of headlines uh, for its look at welcoming visitors back, and some might say they were before Iceland, uh, but about the same time, Greece has announced that they are reopening on June 15th. Greece has said they've beat this whole COVID-19 thing, uh, and they will be welcoming tourists from 29 countries starting on June 15th. Which 29 countries? Well, in alph alphabetical order, really, really quickly, that is Albania, Australia, Austria, Bulgaria, China, Croatia, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Germany, Hungary, Israel, Japan, Latvia, Lebanon, Lithuania, Malta, Montenegro, New Zealand, North Macedonia, is that a country? Norway, Romania, Serbia, Slovakia, Slovenia, South Korea, and Switzerland. So residents of those 29 countries will be able to go to Greece uh, starting June 15th, and Greece says they will open up to more countries starting July 1st. Um, now, Greece will be testing everyone upon arrival for COVID-19 if they are coming from a high-risk airport. Uh, otherwise, they're only doing some form of spot COVID-19 testing. And even for, say, like uh, airports in the USA, they've necked down what's high-risk to specific airports and not all of the states. Um, so... Uh, if you start at a high-risk airport, then the testing and potential quarantine apply. If you originate from a low-risk airport, then it doesn't. So if you're in the U.S. and maybe you left from, like, Nevada, which uh, isn't one of their high-risk airports, you left from Las Vegas airport, then there's no COVID-19 test uh, on arrival. Um, next country uh, one of the ones down under Australia. I want to talk about Australia in just a second. But Mr. Beluga said alphabetical order, very organized. Thank you, Mr. Beluga. Uh, Shay says, what about Prague? Prague, I've not seen many uh, announcements about the Czech Republic. Uh, and E EJ Braden Kai says, uh, I should have pronounced it St. Lucia. Thank you very much. I appreciate the correction. Um, and, uh, okay, and Johnson Rice said it almost sounded like Yaka Warner singing the Geography song. I don't know if I've heard that song. I will need to uh, look that song up now. Um, not now, but after I do this live stream. You all be really bored if I spend some time looking up uh, 
songs right now while we do this. Maybe that's my next live stream. I just look up songs or I take requests for songs. You know, it's like the band who says, uh, yeah, well, we take requests for playing songs. We just don't play them. We take any request you want. Uh, all right. So Australia and New Zealand uh, have both instituted a complete travel ban of foreigners. Um, so no uh non-Australian or New Zealand citizens allowed to travel there. Uh, Australia and New Zealand are in discussions for a travel bubble between the two countries. Uh, Fiji have said uh, they want to join. They're calling this travel bubble the Trans-Tasman bubble. Now, just in the news yesterday is uh, Singapore is proposing its own travel bubble of sorts and has said, hey, Singapore saying, hey, Australia, we would like you to join our travel bubble. Uh, and Singapore is calling it a green lane proposal. What does it mean? They're basically extending this like safe air corridor to a whole bunch of countries that say they're going to have the same kind of tests, the same testing requirements. Uh, and so Singapore is looking in addition to Australia and New Zealand to Malaysia, South Korea uh, also, uh, and uh, saying that uh, the 14-day uh, quarantine at both ends is really uh, unworkable for travel uh, to resume in the long run. Spain, España. Uh, so Spain has announced their opening in July. Uh, their Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez uh, said recently uh, he's announcing that from the month of July, entry for foreign tourists into Spain will resume in secure conditions. What does that mean? They really was no more detail from the Prime Minister other than that, but July is when they're welcoming visitors back to Spain. Now, uh, interesting, there is this uh, hotel in Spain called the um, Shaw Wellness Clinic. And at this hotel, the hotel itself is requiring people staying at the hotel to have a COVID-19 test. Uh, and the COVID-19 test is actually included in the room rate if you're staying at this hotel. And the perspective of the hotel is that uh, everybody's worried about their peace of mind. And so people will come to the hotel to stay there if they know that other people in the hotel were tested too, then they don't have to worry about it uh, all that much. So I thought that was kind of an interesting thing to include in a room rate. You know, it's not a free buffet, but uh, it's a free COVID-19 test. Um, uh, Ethan says, I should do a video on public transport in Chicago. All right. Uh, I will consider that. Uh, Elvis wants to know if the Sydney Opera House will be open for the public. Maybe when Australia actually reopens, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, the one and only Pinky says, what about California hotels? I'm going to talk about California uh, in just a little bit. Um, all right. Uh Okay, so another country, and I, I didn't, I didn't get this one uh, in time for my slides in this because this uh, was recently hot off the presses. So uh, Cyprus here, as the country, they are pledging to cover costs for virus hit tourists. So if you uh, visit Cyprus, well, uh, and you get sick there, then the Cypriot government says it will cover your lodging, food, drink, and medication for COVID-19 patients in their family and their families. Patients will only have to pay uh, for the taxi ride uh, and the flight back home. Uh, and they will have a 100-bed hospital catering exclusively to foreign travelers who test positive, uh, and they will also have a 500-room quarantine hotel uh, reserved for patients, family members, and other close contacts. Um, and so Cyprus is reopening starting June 9th uh, from 19 countries, uh, and then uh, June 20th, they're adding 13 more countries to that list of people that are open uh, for Cyprus. Now, in order to get to places, flights have to come back. Well, there are some airports that are coming back. Uh, and in particular, one of my favorite airports, uh, Singapore Changi Airport, they are opening June 2nd tomorrow for transit passengers. So right now, it's like Singapore's biggest business in their airport is people transiting through Singapore and not really going to Singapore's destination, but landing there and going someplace else. Um, and so no transit passengers have been allowed uh, for quite a while now, uh, but they will be putting in um, stringent measures uh, to ensure that transit passengers remain in their designated facilities and do not mix with other passengers in the airport. Uh, and uh, Singapore itself, though, uh, still 
close to visitors. Uh, but the airport opening back up. That's good news. So you could uh, connect through there. Uh, another airport that just reopened for transit passengers is Hong Kong Airport. Uh, Hong Kong Airport today, June 1st, uh, is reopening for transit passengers. And uh, interesting thing that they're doing for transit passengers, uh, they're not allowing any more than eight hours for a connection. So if you have a connection in Hong Kong, it has to be less than eight hours. Um, and on arrival, as a transit passenger to Hong Kong airport, uh, passengers will be subject to body temperature screening. They'll have uh, hand sanitizer dispensers and sanitizing floor mats. I'm not really sure what that is. Maybe it sanitizes your shoes. And then um, when transit passengers get off the plane, they'll be handed a transfer sticker uh, that I guess says the gate that they're going to and then be requested to go directly to the boarding gates for their connecting flights immediately. How does that work with lounges and things like that? I'm not sure. And it says requested as opposed to enforced. Um, I don't, you know, if anybody watching this goes through Hong Kong airport, I'd be interested in a report to see uh, how that all worked. Uh, but since I just announced today, not a lot of reports of how it's actually working through there. Um, and uh, now a country that's completely at odds with all of these things is uh, South Africa. South Africa uh, has said uh, they do not plan to reopen for tourism uh, until February 2021. So if you're planning to go to South Africa, uh, don't expect to go there for at least eight months. South Africa is also not opening domestic tourism until December 2020. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the U.S. here in just a second. Um, and uh, so, um, let's see. Uh, AB says, do a video about California responding. I'll talk a little bit about California here, but yes, it might be worth about the whole thing. Uh, Abraham wants to know about Diamond Resort. I have no I, I don't know what Diamond Resorts is, so uh, I don't know when that's opening. Uh, Mr. Beluga says, uh, will most hotels use UV lights? Most? Hmm, I don't think most will. But if you want to know all about hotels, actually, I've got a link in the description to a video I did about uh, the future of hotels and how hotel room stays will look different. Uh, so you can uh, check that video out to know more detail uh, how hotels are going to work. All right. So let's talk about uh, the U.S. And is the U.S. open? Is the U.S. reopening? You've probably all heard that the U.S. is reopening. Well, mm, kind of. So internally to the U.S., there's some reopening stuff going on. There's also some riots going on. Uh, not really the subject of this video. Um, but currently, non-U.S. citizens uh, cannot travel to the USA if they visited basically like a handful of countries. So uh, people who've been to China in the last 14 days, Iran, um, the countries comprising uh, Europe's Schengen area, uh, including Austria, Belgium, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia. I'm not going to go through that whole list, but kind of mainland Europe, um, the U.K., uh, and Brazil are currently uh, basically banned from coming to the U.S. Uh, and also in the U.S., the land borders to Mexico and Canada are currently closed through June 22nd. Will they reopen after June 22nd? It is hard to say, but that is the current date uh, that is there. Mm. What am I drinking today? Today I am drinking a pudding milk tea from ding tea. This is not a boba tea, but it's a milk tea that has pudding in it. Take a look at that. Mm. So when I drink this, the pudding actually comes up in the straw. Pretty tasty. Uh, all right. So a uh, change the U.S. is doing, the TSA, the Transportation Security uh, Administration, uh, and now they're no longer going to touch your boarding pass. If you've flown through the U.S. checkpoint anytime in the last uh, five, ten years. Who knows? The TSA agents love to scribble on your boarding pass. They make initials. They circle things. Uh, they will now no longer do that. Instead, travelers will place their boarding passes, whether paper or electronic, directly on the boarding pass reader themselves. Once that's complete, then passengers will hold it towards the agent so the officer can visually inspect it, but they're not going to hand it to the TSA agent. Uh, as many of you know, I've been doing a lot of streams lately about Las Vegas reopening. Las Vegas is reopening to visitors on June 4th. They've said, come on in. Uh, you are welcome if you can get there. I say that because a lot of international flights are still not going and a lot of international countries still can't get here. But if you can get to Vegas, uh, then you are welcome. 
interesting news coming out of uh, Arlington, Virginia. There's this restaurant called The Inn at Little Washington. They've reopened for dine-in customers, but they have to fall social distancing, which means, you know, every other table's empty. And so what have they done to do that? Well, so that people don't feel like they're sitting in a weird, empty restaurant, this restaurant has actually put mannequins at the tables uh, so that uh, you don't feel like the restaurant is empty when you're sitting there because there's some mannequins uh, for you to keep you company. Disney World, big attraction in the U.S., they've announced their opening July 11th uh, in Florida. Uh, they're limiting the number of visitors, and it's only currently open if you already hold a ticket or an annual pass. By the way, if you go to Disney World, when they reopen, you will need to wear a mask in the summer in Florida. That's going to be kind of rough. Uh, Disney's talked about establishing some relaxation zones, perhaps, where guests can take off their masks, uh, but that's still TBD. But, you know, they'll leave some seats empty, so like on the Pirates of the Caribbean, seats would be left empty. Um, shops will have new signage that will say, uh, help us protect the magic, please limit handling of the project, the products. Now, uh, when I was looking this up about Disney World in Florida, I just wanted to share some interesting statistics about Disney World in Florida that actually it's so big, it's like difficult to comprehend. Disney World in Florida is the United States' largest single site employer. So they employ more people in one location than any other company in the U.S., 75,000 employees. Uh, they have a larger bus fleet than the city of St. Louis, and uh, visitors to Disney World gobbled up uh, one million turkey legs. Uh, that That's an insane number of turkey legs. Um, now, uh, other big theme park a lot of people are asking about is Universal Studios. Uh, Universal Studios Orlando is opening up here actually just four days, June 5th, uh, much earlier than Disney World. And then SeaWorld Orlando is opening up June 11th. Now, I've had a lot of questions about California. Chris, what about California? Um... We're open here in California, uh, but still mostly closed. You know, you've probably heard about the California phased opening plan that plans to open in phases, that we deploy in phases, that we never really know what phase we're in. And while we seem to open more things in phases, we still steam, seem to stay mostly closed. Uh, the beaches are open. Well, I mean, some of them. Uh, I mean, it really... Like, it really kind of depends. It depends what kind of beach it is. See, I think the really confusing thing about this in the U.S., and I, and I know there's a lot of you that are on this that live in the U.S. and know this, but there's a lot of viewers that also aren't. So the U.S., uh, like, it's, you know, right, uh, there's the federal government, there's the state government, there's county governments, and there's city governments. And so, like, beaches in California could be operated by any one of those jurisdictions, and the city has different regulations from the state versus the county. And so, like, we went to a beach in Laguna Beach, which is a really nice beach here in Southern California. And the beach that's operated by the city of Laguna Beach uh, was only open from 6 a.m. to noon. But then there's a beach... And when I say a, like a different beach, I mean it's just different parts of the sand, right? Like if you're – if you stand here, you might be in a city of Laguna Beach beach. If you stand here, then you're in a county beach, and this one was open all day. So uh, you might not be able to sit in the sand. The bathrooms might be op not be open. The parking lots might still be closed. So generally California, I, I would describe it as – not really open right now. Uh, some restaurants have started reopening for dine-in, although in uh, San Diego and Orange County, uh, restaurants can reopen for dine-in with some restrictions. Many are still choosing not to and still only doing takeout or, or still remaining closed. And it, it's challenging here because like all the guidance like everywhere just comes out like effective immediately. 9 p.m. Friday night, effective immediately, restaurants can now reopen. Restaurants like, I got to get food. I got to get staff. I got to do that. I don't even know if anybody would come. Uh, so that makes it challenging. Now, theme parks, what I've got the picture of right here, uh, Disneyland, currently no opening date. Uh, a lot of people have asked about Disneyland, but they've not announced an opening date for Disneyland or downtown Disney. Uh, in San Diego, uh, San Diego theme parks have kind of got together, and San Diego is proposing uh, that the San Diego theme parks be the first to open in the U.S. They are targeting, sorry, the first to open in California. They are targeting July 1st. So that's uh, SeaWorld, Legoland, California, the San Diego Zoo, 
and the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. So those are the ones that are going to open on July 1st. Uh, now, the one thing I want to mention about this is that if you do decide to go to any of these destinations, uh, particularly if it's an international one, please make sure you have enough money and enough time for potential two weeks of quarantine because uh, if you end up with one of these things and you do get COVID-19 and you're in a place that imposes quarantine, then you might have to do that. You might have to go to the hospital. And so if that's the case, uh, please make sure you have health insurance for where you are going. Uh, with that, it brings us to what time in the video? It brings us to the question and answer time. Uh, all right, so... What questions do you all have? And if you've asked a question and I haven't answered it well, then please ask it again and make sure there's a question mark at the end. Dave Thompson says, how do you hug Tigger? I don't know. There must be a joke there. How do you hug uh, Tigger? Mr. Beluga asks if Las Vegas will push back the opening days for the riots. I have not heard of any changes to Las Vegas' opening date. The riots are like in downtown Vegas, and there's the Strip too. I mean, the riots are generally... Um, while it seems like we hear about them in all of the U.S. or all of Las Vegas or all of Los Angeles is rioting, it's really just fairly small targeted areas that is happening. It's 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 off it's awful what's happening, um, but uh, I don't expect uh, that the casinos will be pushed back. Uh, Kathy uh, asked if I can give a shout out to her son Darcy. It's his twenty first twenty first birthday. Happy birthday, uh, Darcy! You got an awesome mom there, and Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Um, okay. Uh, Fallout fan says, I'm hearing nothing from Cedar Fair Park, so uh, that's not Spray Farm. California's a great adventure. I have not uh, heard anything about them either. Uh, Dallas Cook asks, I think it's too early to reopen. I, I do not think it's too early to reopen. Um, you know, we can't stay closed forever. you got to reopen. There's There's got to be first movers. Um, and I think there's people that will weigh the risks and say, hey, I want to go. I mean, actually, I think going to these places that reopen, like Iceland or even Las Vegas right now, they're going to be so clean and they're going to be so paranoid about things. I actually think if you go to places when they first reopen, I think that might actually be uh, some of the safest times. Um, Annie says, Chris, do you think with the protest plus possibly the second wave, will the Canada-USA border reopen end of June? Uh, I would like to think that Canada and U.S. will reopen. Um, Trump has said he wants that to happen soon. So, uh, and I, I, I really, I really hope that uh, the protests don't last that long. Uh, CV Kaz, any hopes for Hawaii reopening anytime soon? CV Kaz, watch my video all about Hawaii reopening. Uh, not probably until July at the earliest. Um, RT Charge says, why yellow? It's my favorite color. Uh, if you want to know more about that, I like I answered in glory detail in my Yellow Productions Frequently Asked Questions video. Just search on YouTube for Yellow Productions FAQ. That's one of my uh, frequently asked questions that I answer over there. MT wants to know if Resorts World in Las Vegas is on schedule. It is. Hi, Elvis. Shout out to you. Uh, Jordan says, when does New York City reopen? Probably not for a while. They were one of the hardest hit places. Um, and, uh, oh, did I shout out Elvis? He wants to shout out to Diego. So shout out to you, Diego. Um, Christine, uh, wants to know, sorry, Christian wants to know, uh, what is the first place you want to travel to? First place I want to travel to. Hmm. Uh, we definitely love Japan, so we want to get back to Japan. Love to get back to Singapore again, too. Uh, those are some great places. Um, Dallas says, I'm hoping uh, that the Canadian-U.S. border reopens because I would love to get to Vegas. I would love for you to get to Vegas, too. Uh, Larry asked about Six Flags. Six Flags, I've not seen any opening dates from Six Flags. Aussie says, uh, the advantage of the Northern Hemisphere uh, is you're coming into summer. Downside is we're coming into winter. More chance of a second wave. Um and uh, Mr. Beluga says Yellow Productions is the best channel for travel tips. Thank you, Mr. Beluga. Uh, I'll give you the $5 later for saying that. Thank you very much. Uh, Elliot uh, asked if I can use the word catawampus in a sentence. Um, I, I don't even know what a catawampus is. But I guess that qualifies as a sentence uh, for me to say I don't know what a catawampus uh, is. Yaritza says are retail stores in California open? Uh, it depends on which part of California, uh, de again, depending upon cities and counties. Uh, 
but uh, retail stores have begun to reopen in most parts of California and reopen for uh, in-person attendance. Actually, though, they're having to um, limit the amount of people that are there. Born and raised asked if I would go on a cruise now. Um, I, um, hmm, we're not big cruise fans. OC Girl kind of gets seasick, so uh, cruises aren't really super high on, they weren't super high on our list to begin with. Jordan wants to know if I went to Shibuya. Sure did. Actually, just uh, on Saturday, I was editing a video at Shibuya Sky, which is a observatory in Tokyo, one of the newest ones. Um, Bella wants to know, what's the first place OC Girl and I will travel to with Little Princess? Uh, probably probably to Taiwan will probably be the first place we will travel with her. Uh, I don't know about when the Maldives are reopening these little island nations. It's tough because if they get a lot of COVID-19, uh, it's challenging. Uh, Shay wants to know what I think of the virus test. Uh, I'm, I'm not an epidemic. Epidemiologist? I, that, that's a hard word. I'm not somebody who studies viruses, so I don't, I don't know that I think uh, much of the tests. Uh, Elvis uh, says, I always make uh, his day great. Shout out to you and Panda. Uh, thank you, Diego. Uh, shout out shout out to the whole Yellow Productions crew that's back there. I need to put that comment off the screen so you can see the crew that's hanging out there. Uh, oh, Amy says, uh, that table is a little catawampus off center. Amy, very good. There must be like an English English major in your background. Hmm. Ah, uh, wow. David right there is like really annoying. So uh, David is in timeout. Uh, all right. Uh, Andrea says, when will Japan reopen? They've not announced reopening dates yet. Uh, so I haven't heard any dates from there. Um Jeff says Western Pennsylvania will be in the green phase on Friday. Uh, what does the green phase mean? See, this is it. Like, every state is opening with different numbers of phases, colors, letters. Uh, VIP says, is there a chance you might visit Galaxy's Edge in Disney World or Disneyland? I've already actually visited Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland. I was at Galaxy's Edge on opening day at Disneyland. If you've not seen my video on it, search for Yellow Productions Galaxy's Edge and you will find it. Um... All right. Uh, Chase uh, says a bit off topic, but however, am I a Trump supporter? I keep this kind of like a politics free zone here so it doesn't spiral into other things. So uh, let's talk about travel instead of Trump. Uh, Ken says this beverage is at least 500 calories. This is my pudding milk tea. Yeah, it's a drink and a dessert all in one. So tasty, though. Uh Jordan says, uh, what's what's the live hotels in Japan? Live hotel? Love hotels, maybe what you meant to say. Love hotels in Japan. They're basically hotels you can rent by the hour in Japan instead of uh, by the night. Um, Christine says, I don't know if you saw my comment, but thank you for all the research you do for these vids. We appreciate you. Thank you, Christine. I appreciate the love. I appreciate you watching. Uh, Matthew wants to know if I can make a trip to Summerfest. What is Summerfest? Uh, and Shay says the chat is sometimes not working. I thought the problem was only at my side. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that YouTube's having issues with chat today. I've seen a few people mention that in the chat that they've been having issues with it. Uh, so for those of you that chat is working, uh, it's good to see. Laura says, I look forward to making new friends when California opens. Laura, I look forward to you making new friends when California opens as well. Churro says, did they open the malls in Vegas? They have opened the shopping malls in Vegas. Uh, the Las Vegas outlets north and south are open. Um, the Caesars Forum shops are open. Um, the Crystals Mall is open. Now, not all the shops in these places are open, but they have uh, – the shops themselves are reopened. Um, ooh, we got more about Catawampus. I love – that this live stream is talking about Caddy Wampus because that was totally not in the notes that I prepared. And what I love about live streams, they go all sorts of interesting places. An example of something Caddy Wampus are the positions of the items on the top of a coffee table after a two year old has been playing with them and moving them around. Thank you, Anil, for your uh, support on that one. The like, the um, 
what educational level of this live stream and the intellectual level of it just went up like three notches, I think. Colleen says, are people in California wearing masks when going out? In California, to go into basically any essential business, you have to wear a mask. Uh, so um, like for example, today uh, at lunch uh, to go into – where else? In out burger to get a double double. I had to wear a face mask to go in to get it. I uh, went to Target to pick up some groceries. You have to wear a face mask at Target. Um, you don't have to wear them when you're outside and you're exercising. Um, we were hiking yesterday at the Cabrillo National Monument in San Diego. I would say about 50 50 people were wearing face masks versus not just out, out and about. Um, Annie asks if they'll use UV lights to clean planes like some hotels do. I think the planes, they're trying to do more of the fogging than they are the UV lights. Uh, Ken wants me to review a capsule hotel. I would like to do that too. OC Girl has really been prodding me to do that, so I need to figure out how I do that. Um, Born and raised says, if you had a chance to move to Vietnam or Taiwan, which country would you pick? I've never been to Vietnam, therefore I would pick Taiwan because it's something that I know versus something that I don't know. Not, not because there's uh, one that I think is better than the other, having not been to Vietnam. Uh, Laura says, are we going on any nature adventures? I think just yesterday to the Cabrillo National Monument was a pretty good nature adventure. We've been doing a lot of hiking, that sort of stuff. Uh, for those of you that have any plans to visit San Diego in the near future, definitely make the Cabrillo National Monument a stop. They've got, I think, one of uh, San Diego's most scenic hiking trails where you can see all of San Diego Bay from it. Uh, Career National Monument, uh, if you saw my Instagram post, is also uh, famous for being uh, the first place on the west coast of North America uh, where a European landed a ship. So, uh, and apparently it's right under that monument. Uh, Christine says Arizona's opening. We're in a phase two. The Grand Canyon is open. I have seen uh, some news about the Grand Canyon opening, so that's cool. And Fallout fan says this stream is the first time he has ever heard the word caddy wampus. All right, very good. Um, and Matt's tuning in from Saskatchewan, Canada. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Um, Let's see. Uh, Annie says, uh, Chris with the in and out and bubble teas, how do you stay fit? Lots lots of exercise, lots of dance revolution, lots of bike rides. Um, that's how. Uh, Anil asks if I have any uh, – have any – have you gotten testing done for COVID-19 uh, for your future travel? Uh, no, because I don't have any travel actually scheduled. I have zero travel currently scheduled. I haven't wants to know if I've ever been scammed in Vegas. I've not been scammed in Vegas. I was robbed in London, uh, but not in Vegas. How are you scammed in uh, Vegas, Ivan? Uh, VIP wants to know if I've uh, built a lightsaber in Galaxy's Edge. Uh, I've not because I've always found it like long lines and reservations, and I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do with the lightsaber if I had one. How many friends does Topher have? This is like how many people are in – the uh the yellow productions crew there's obviously more in the other room on the sofa i think there's about i think there's about 20 pandas in the yellow productions crew my favorite hotel in las vegas is the uh used to be the mandarin oriental it's now the waldorf astoria i've had to pick one that's my favorite uh from a value perspective then i like marriott's grand chateau johnson rice wants to know what is the best place anywhere to get bubble tea Ooh, that's hard to say. Uh, but at least a place that I like uh, around here, around Southern California. And it's a chain, so you can find a lot of places called The Alley. The Alley. Um, they're actually opening up in uh, Las Vegas in the Palazzo Hotel. So if you're going uh, there, you can check it out. I really like their uh, – it's like their royal milk tea, so it's made of like Earl Grey tea. So it has a bit of that, what, like lavender kind of flavor. Uh, Colleen wants to know what's our next outside nature walk or park. Uh, probably just visiting the beaches here in Southern California as they reopen. I don't know what our big uh, next nature destination is going to be. We've kind of been going on some of these like obscure uh, like hiking sites for Southern California just to kind of try to find places off the beaten path that aren't very busy, which are also the kind of things that wouldn't really be that interesting to make a video about because it's like, look, it's a path. 
that has nobody on it. Uh, recently, we hiked a path called uh, it was like the it was like Roller Coaster Ridge because uh, it was like one of these like the trails like up and down and up and down and up and down. Uh, Waka says, did I say DDR to stay fit? I sure did, Waka. I love Dance Dance Revolution. If you want to see me playing Dance Dance Revolution, you can search for Yellow Productions Dance Dance Revolution. There is a clip of me playing DDR on YouTube. Christine wants to know, who is my favorite YouTuber? That's hard to say. I don't... Uh, I'll answer this as, like, as a food YouTuber. Probably my favorite YouTuber is Mark Weens. Uh, he's in Bangkok, Thailand. He does a lot of really neat... Um, like kind of like looks at street food in Thailand. And he was actually showing off how they're doing social distancing in Bangkok. And it's really funny at these street food restaurants, they basically just put like these, you know, small tables. They put like a plastic, a see-through plastic bag on um, PVC pipe between you and the person sitting across from you to create a little barrier. Uh, Andrea says, uh, what countries of Latin America would you like to visit? I'd like to visit a lot of them, uh, but probably uh, maybe Peru uh, as our first one. Carlos asked if I play video games. Not as much as I would like. Uh, I really like uh, like the music games, like Rhythm, rhythm Action games. Though in this kind of like COVID-19 time, the Epic Game Store was giving away like Grand Theft Auto 4 or 5, so I picked that up a little bit recently. Laura wants to know if I like Waldorf salad. I don't know what a Waldorf salad is. I'm not a big salad eater, really. Um... AB wants to know if I like the Westgate. The Westgate Hotel in Las Vegas is the former Hilton. Not really. It's like in the middle of nowhere, so I don't like the Westgate. Um, Shay uh, says the best bubble tea is uh, Ko D, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Thailand. All right. Thanks, uh, thanks for that tip. Uh, and MT says, uh, Chris, I thought the Venetian was your favorite hotel. Yeah, so the Vene I really enjoy the Venetian as well. Uh, but if I was going to pick one, I pick, uh, I pick the, um, Waldorf Astoria. Uh, so it's different, right? Like, so like I made a video about the five best luxury hotels in Las Vegas. And I said the Venetian as like an integrated resort. I like the Venetian best. The question was, what's my favorite hotel? Not what's my favorite hotel casino. So that's why I picked that as the hotel. I like the hotel part of the, um, Waldorf Astoria the best. And I like that it actually has no casino. Uh, Laura asks if I kayak. Uh, I like to kayak. I don't do any like rough water kayaking, but maybe like lake kayaking. Uh, I've never been kayaking to see sea otters, but that's cool. Uh, Yartiza says, what do I use to play DDR on the Wii? I go, I go to the arcade. Uh, I go to round one. It's a Japanese arcade, uh, and they've got a few locations here in Southern California, and they always have a few... Uh, TDR machines. Johnson Rice says, new side project, Yellow Productions Twitch channel, TDR edition. It's actually funny because uh, I've done some videos on Japanese arcade games. Uh, I was actually uh, featured on a Japanese TV show playing Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, interesting side anecdote. Uh, so yeah, take, take a look for that. Um, Christine uh, says, uh, besides your channel, I love uh, Emmy Made in Japan. She's a cute version of Andrew Zimmern. I'll have to take a look at her channel. I, I love Andrew Zimmern. He's cool, too. Uh, and um, Laura says, Waldorf salad is apples, grapes, apples, walnuts, and grapes. Uh, it sounds pretty good, actually. So uh, maybe I'll check that out next time I see it. Mauricio wants to know if I'll go to Vegas as soon as they reopen. That's in three days. I will not be there in three days. Um, so... Uh, but that's also because we have we have a little one in the house. If you've been hearing a few little kind of like in the background, that's our that's our little explorer. Um, Annie asked, uh, "How's Topher and our traveling princess doing?" Uh, they're good. They're good. Uh, Topher's good back here. The crew's good. And our traveling princess is doing uh, well as well. Mr. Beluga says the round one in Lakewood uh, is where I go. Uh, Lakewood, which is like Long Beach, right? I've been to that one. Uh, I often go to the round one either in the city of industry or the round one in Santa Ana. Um, the one that uh, I did the – I did the uh, – I did the video on the Japanese TV show was the round one um, was the round one in uh, Temecula 
All right, so it is giveaway time. So my question for you for the giveaway uh, to win a Yellow Productions Crew t-shirt, t-shirt that has that logo on it right there, uh, is how many turkey legs are eaten at Disney World annually? I mentioned this number earlier, and so you have to say the number that I said, uh, which is how many turkey legs are eaten at Disney World annually, if you can answer that. And whoop, you can win a turkey leg. All right, and... People said, how's our uh, little princess doing? Well, I'm just picking her up right here. So that, da, 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 da. so she can be on the live stream. There we go. She's doing well. Her hair is getting quite long. So we've got her in a little bit of an updo today. That's it. I'm not sure that she knows really what to make of what's going on. Uh, but uh, that's it. You, have to, you have to look that way. Look at the camera. Yeah, there you go. Say hi to everybody out there. Say, say hi to the Yellow Productions crew and the fellow explorers. All right. Well, in order to see your chat, I, I have to put her down. So I know, you know, earlier with Caddy Wumpus, we increased the intellectual capital uh, 10 notches. Hopefully, I've just increased the cute capital 10 notches. All right. So uh, lots of people gave answers to the number. And uh, the uh, here we go. Uh, the first person... The first person uh, with the right answer is Yaritza Martinez, and there's lots of people who said one million, and they're they're like probably all at the same time, and some of you might see it differently, and even on your chat it might come differently, but on my chat, the first one to come through is Yaritza with a million. Yaritza, congratulations. You win a Yellow Productions Crew t-shirt. Uh, send me an email to uh, chris at yellow.net with two W's and a second W at the end of it, or message me on Facebook. Let me know your address and what size you'd like the t-shirt, and I will get that right off to you. Well, so now you know is the world reopening soon? The world is reopening soon. Travel's resuming in many places today, Las Vegas, June 4th. If you want to know what Hawaii is doing, i got a whole video about Hawaii. If you want to know what Las Vegas is doing, I've got whole separate videos about Las Vegas. Um, and if you want to know about how to get cheap flights or cheap hotels, if you haven't checked those out, I've got uh, whole live streams all about how to get uh, cheap hotels and cheap flights. You'll find links to those in the description as well. Uh, I thank you all for watching today, and I encourage you to keep on exploring.